I just wanted to just say my favorite book so far of the year because I've read about 40-ish and I don't want to do a giant like recap because that would take too long so I thought I could just do a little like blurb on my favorite books and then we can just like go from there. one I don't have it's my policeman and it was such just a lovely little like queer book set in like I think Bristol or Brighton in the 50s because um, normally any like growing up in America a lot of the stuff you consume is America focused or set in America so any like of the like LGBT history or stories you hear it's always about America AIDS epidemic it's always about like SF or like how people in America dealt with it, even though it was like a worldwide thing. So this it was still such like a lovely look. I almost cried and I don't really cry at a lot of things. Um, but yeah, and then of course there's the whole new, there's the news with Harry Styles is gonna play in it. So very excited for that. Um, so yeah, it's a lovely book, a different new concept. I haven't really read a book like it before, so it's very love. I think everyone should go read it. My second book is The Second Sex by Simone de Beauvoir, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, it's a giant um, on her analyzation of what it's like to be a Western woman and like what that means and how that's come to be. Because she's a French philosopher, so like many thoughts. Um, we have further ideas with more nuance as far as like feminism and analyzation of a lot of these like things they're way more nuanced and stuff nowadays but it's still like 80 years ago people are producing things like this um so it's very good look at like what they thought was important then and it's a look at um this in like in france mainly so that's interesting too because like every country doesn't have their own same like journey like they differ in places so but it's weird because there's some thoughts that she said in here that like are still viewed as like far out there or whatever so it's still like very interesting but it is a long book it's like 1100 1200 pages um, but it is one of, the, one of the first translations where it keeps all of it because I think there's one of the 50s or 60s by like a dude and he full-on cut out her style of writing and very abridged it a lot instead of just actually translating it this is one of the first ones and they kept the style so like she's known for really long-winded paragraphs and they kept that in so like there's a couple points where you're going for like five eight pages and it's still the same paragraph but like it's such a lovely read and such an interesting read and if you want anything like it uh earlier last year i read marriage of history and then a brief history of misogyny like together and it was such an amazing read there's a couple chapters in here where she covers a lot a lot of stuff that those two books cover so if you're sort of scared of this you can sort of read those books because they're smaller I read very understandable with a very um, much like complex and like hard to discuss uh, topic at times lovely books and then my next favorite um, while well, I was at one of my roomies house for winter break because I couldn't go home to California I read 1001 a Space Odyssey in 2010. I haven't seen the movie, but I know it's a classic. A lot of people love it, and I really enjoyed the book. There's, it's such a like unique and like interesting like way of writing sci-fi. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I can't wait to read 2064 or something, and then 3001, and then I can sort of do a whole video just discussing how I found the whole series. Yeah, I because I knew a little bit about. A space Odyssey and with like Hal and stuff but I think the book for me was the correct introduction but it is very enjoyable I didn't know there was a series and speaking of series uh, I loved the Queen's Gambit I watched the Netflix series and binged it in like two or three days and I was like crying at 1am finishing the series um, and I quickly loved it from like the fashion and I don't understand chess I have like nicknames for everything so when we play with my friends they get a uh, bit mad but it's still fun well I'm sure everyone's seen it but there is a book that was written the 80s it's very close to the series but it is still if you want to go back into the whole world it's very enjoyable and if you want like an easy read 
you already know what's gonna happen. But so yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I don't really mind the movie tie-in cover because normally I hate it, but there's certain books like this that it's not too bad. It's not just like, we have a face, go buy it. My next one is a book that I've been recommended I think over for over a year or something by one of my friend's parents and we'll just like talk about stuff we read or like different series um he's a very cool dude shout out to aaron becker um and the becker clan so he recommended me in magica this book is amazing split into two because it's just one giant book so it's easier to like read if it's split up because they're both like still like 500 pages or something it's like ridiculous but it's such a good story i didn't know about it only thing i knew really of clive barker was um the aberat and i think i may have read the back when i was like in grade school um completely loved it it goes over so many different things of like you get different perspectives on like feminism and like there's a, there's a couple queer characters that like really love but it's not there just to be there it's like works really well and also like there's tied into religion there's it's a very philosophical philosoph philosophical book and how to deal with like different environments and it's okay to like take over stuff and whatnot it's just it's full of magic it's full of people and emotions it's full of different worlds and it's I've never read anything like it before I'm gonna say this a lot but it, I'm probably going to be always going to be chasing another book like this. And I'm, I'm sure that if I go reread it, I will find things that I didn't notice the first couple times. And it's still going to be an enjoyable journey and worth the reread. Because for me, it takes a lot for me to want to reread a book. So for this thing to already be like, yeah, I can see myself rereading this in two or three years and finding way more to still dig in stuff i'm so excited and i feel like if you want an adult fantasy novel this is your ticket or like take it into the whole like genre of that but i feel like this is more of a modern accessible version of adult fantasy also clive barker he's english and like gay i think so i'm already in so earlier last year i read the companion to this it's 100 poems that make grown women cry and this was the first book where it's poems that make grown men cry and it's such a lovely introduction to different types of poetry and what people can get out of it because it explained the author of the poem they have the poem and then they'll explain why the person chose it it's more than just reading poems or just read into a person you get like this little like nugget of stuff just sort of at least for me highlights like how different people can be it doesn't really matter like where you come from or who you are you will find something that you can connect with and for different people it will be different things i like the message of it's okay for people especially men to show emotion and not be afraid of like being true with like who you are so if you're scared of poetry you can easily pick up this read it on and off there's no pressure to finish it in one sitting or whatever it's very again accessible and you can find poems and authors and styles that you do like and the branch off from there so last year i read normal people loved it and i was like oh i should probably pick up conversations with friends and i know her writing style is a lot but i completely enjoyed it because it's unconventional and what you really haven't seen before really loved it it's new i like her writing style and yeah it's not the most sophisticated of books i like how sort of like more realistic her books are because you could you can read a lot of romance and it always it always follows like of almost a script you know of like a person falls in love or thrown into a situation and then like they follow this thing and then it's like happy ending so this is there's more of an ambiguous ending just like normal people and i sort of like that it's like then you can sort of like make it how you want but it's also just like in life, you can't really boil stuff down to like neat beginnings, middles, and ends. It's sort of just like you're there for an, like a chunk of and the stories and then you leave it and you don't really know what's gonna happen next. But I feel like with the emotions and the complications, the unclearness that you can get with relationships and just people in life, she really brings it out. And there's a lot of subtextual stuff you can explore a lot. So I don't, I don't really think I'd read it for like the plot again, but I feel like a bit more of the subtext stuff, that'd be very nice. 
oh, I read this the other day on just like, oh, my books are falling down. Just on like a whim. And I think I got this at the Lighthouse in Edinburgh. It's Notes on Camp by Susan Sontag and it's amazing. It's also, I don't guess, for any person who wants to explore or just an introduction to whole that whole world of like what it actually means to be like feminine or masculine or just like yourself. This is a lot because this, there's many quotes and um, me, I myself want to get more into like queer theory and just like whatever because like, she, she summarizes it. So it's sort of like what you make of it. It's something like of aestheticism and camp has everything in a quotation mark. One that I love, it's what's beautiful as men is something feminine and what's beautiful in women is something masculine. So it's sort of like blurring the lines and just letting like people play with things and camp camp is camp because people have like the confidence behind it and like they're pulling it off no matter what it looks like because but if you go out there wearing what you want to wear to being who you want to be just with confidence people are gonna be like oh yeah that looks good you know she has this whole message of it's more of a you being camp it's a lot of like self-love and self-acceptance because you're doing it because it feels the most true to you or like because you like it not because oh that's the fashion of everyone's doing you know you're doing it because it's what you feel more comfortable in you know and there's the whole Met Gala thing with other outfits and that was enjoyable now like looking back and you can just do that out, out, out in the open like hey like what is camp and you can work on sort of like what that sort of like means for you because camp is also very individual like definition in self-expression with the penguin moderns i also got more of G uh, george orwell's stuff and i honestly didn't like it as much because he again wrote a lot of the stuff in like the 40s so it doesn't really age well there's just a lot of like stuff that was of his time there's good like sentences or ideas but his explanations or reasonings why i don't really think they hold up i didn't like them but um, like I can see where he's coming from. But I think now, like 80 years on, we've moved on or just changed our way of thinking and how we view certain things. One on languages, he was just like, why are we trying to like, get different words and stuff? Like we have one word that works. And I think it's just like, this English language is alive. So it's gonna be changing and incorporate new words and just everyone doesn't have to speak in the most efficient, most proper, most fancy way of talk. That's the beauty of we all can say the same sentence with the overall meaning, but the different expressions have different connotations and different specific meanings to the speaker and then to the listener. So I feel like that's one of the more like personal stuff you can put into a language and he is just like, why do we need it? Um, but it's still interesting points to like talk about because I don't want to just read everyone that I agree with. I want to read people that are view stuff differently or have different ideas. So then like, I can really define like what I like about things, what I think about things. Um, so I want to expe definitely explore more of the essays, even though part of it, I'll just like, you'll hear if I'm reading it, you'll just like see me just like, <gasps> or just like underline stuff and be like, ah, in the margins. Um, but I definitely like his fiction more. So like I recently went Animal Farm. I mean, I already knew it was about, but it's still interesting because I've never actually like read it. Again, short little novel, controversial in like when it was published, everyone's like, oh, we know what this is like alluding to. Like, really? We're not, we don't publish it. I almost enjoyed more than the story was the introduction and then the one for the different versions. I'm the kind of person that always reads the intro and the epilogues and stuff in novels and a lot of my roommates are just like no you don't have to read the intro and stuff but i i like it because it's like it's the author wrote it people have inserted it people have published it might as well read it and then i everyone knows 1984 loved this book i think i read it in like middle school or freshman year and it sort of freaked me out i mean not hella but it was still just like it was like oh my god but again i still love the language aspect of it because the whole new speak and i feel like this is such an interesting concept to like dig into with the different like theories of languages and stuff but i definitely want to reread this soon um because it's been a while and now i'm more like present in society i'm not still like, in the na naivety of like childhood and stuff so it should be really interesting you can really tell that he's a dude in the 40s um especially a british dude in the 40s so i love the NBC show Hannibal and I was just like oh there's a book because in the TV show it's all based on 
the book The Red Dragon by Thomas Harris and I was just like oh maybe I should read the series. So this is the third book. It's called Hannibal. It's set after Red Dragon, Signs of the Lamb and it's still with Clarice. It's such a good book. I almost liked it more than the fourth book Hannibal Rising which is a prequel so it's like when Hannibal is younger till when he gets to Baltimore but I loved the ending to this. The whole series isn't really that creepy because especially if you've seen the show it's not that bad. I don't know what it was but it's still such an enjoyable series and I hope there's a season four soon. In the meantime if you want to get your sort of Hannibal fix Will is only in I think the first one maybe a little bit in the second one but mainly just Red Dragon but you can read these and there's still Hannibal Lecter and at least Clarice. It is such a joy. So I loved it. I, if there was more books, I would read that too. I bought this on a whim. I thought it was gonna be like gay or like queer. I just didn't properly look at the cover on Waterstones or like read it, but it was still such an enjoyable book. And it's very short. I read through, I think in like two days and I was full the whole time. I was like marking it up. And like, I think I'm gonna have to reread this like next year or something. It's Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. It's such a wonderful exploration of what it means to be like a dude, especially a black dude in the UK. Because a lot of the books I've read, it's always set around America again. And I would like to live in America as a person of color, or as a woman, or as a dude. But Britain has this whole thing of they like to think that they're not racist or have a problem with racism because they got rid of slavery before the US did. But it's more like baked into the system. While America, it's right in front of your face because it's still so new, like it's still recent. And like we had the civil rights movement, but like there's still more to be done. And it's like really obvious to see where it comes from. Cause while I think the UK just tried to put under the rug the whole time. So this is a very good, if you want to know what it's sort of like, but not like that being the main part of the book, but still be like an influential part, this is a really good little tiny read. And it's such amazingly written. There's there's a lot of more like poetic lines and stuff because he, it's about uh, this dude and his relationship with this girl. It's just the crowd is going through that, but like they're both, you know, black. They're both like British and yet their families aren't that wealthy so they have they get scholarships to private school and yet private school there's not a lot of people of color so like they're the only ones and like just going through life just trying to make stuff work you know and yet there's still stuff happens like still like violence and whatnot for no apparent reason just because like people are who they are so it's still an amazing read i'm gonna be recommending this i think for the years to come but it's such a little lovely book that i don't think one read is enough to properly get all the stuff that's said because when it comes to just love and relationship, but also like those relationships with like your country and the people there and like your identity, it's such a nuanced thing. If anything, read this and maybe like a Magica. In Scottish Lit, we read this book um, called The Panopticon and I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. It's about this girl and she's a lot of trauma because she's been in like the foster care system and it's set in Scotland so they, she does speak in a very like broad Scottish accent it's like typed out phonetically and let me tell you like sometimes it's ha so hard to like read but eventually you do understand it you do get it and it's not like everything the narration is in English but then sh uh, Anais or Anais speaks it with her accent which is such a cool way to bring the reader into her head more but the Panopticon is just like a circular or a semicircle prison that has a, a watchtower and the whole idea is whether there actually is a warden up there or not the prisoners would more self-police and it's just a larger commentary just on society and like surveillance and stuff uh not directly because uh what is it jenny fagan didn't set out to make commentary on the foster care system but that's ultimately what happened it's still very enjoyable there's a lot of you can almost seem paranoid ta discussing this book because in one of the lectures my professor said oh the UK is one of the most surveillance countries with the most like CCTV things and then me and my friend were walking down Saki Hall Street we counted for like a minute and there was already like 15 or 20 of them it's sort of like a different take on something like 1984 a little bit but still like you can see this happening more quickly than 
1984 and this is already 10 years old so like a lot of stuff has changed. I loved it because like, you get to see her true voice and stuff um, and the ending it's such a again it's like more of an ambiguous ending but it's sort of what you need with a book like this you don't want like one ending that's this is how it is you know. For the last book again it's a little poetry anthology it's poems in the underground and it is such a lovely collection because for like decades now the London Underground has been putting up poems at the stations for just workers to read and they have like an Instagram account of the, where they post them and this is just a short collection but I've never really read an anthology that's set up in the different sections as this one is and it's such again like just an easy accessible and like very smart way of interacting with a bunch of different types of poetry. If you want more of an easy read or just like a non intimidating way of approaching poetry, this is it. It's, I loved it. You can easily just put it like in your bag. This is such a cool book to have. Or you could just follow the Instagram account. Obviously not everyone lives in London and uses the underground. I hope you guys enjoyed just some of my favorites that I've read this year. If you have any recommendations of what I should read next or sort of like video ideas, if you want me to go more in depth in to certain books or certain topics or authors or whatever like let me know and we can do this whole thing together <laughs>